Hello everybody, in this video, as a part of my lab, I'm going to create a new virtual machine that's handling and hosting a Red Hat OS 8.7. So to start in my Oracle VirtualBox virtualization environment, I'm going to click on new. I'm going to select keep the folder same, I'm already installed this 8.7 ISO image, can download it from Internet. I will call it real dash eight. If you can see it's by default. Once I select the ISO image, it's come to here. So let me do next, keeping this setting as it's with the default URLs. This for host name or other so I'll keep it or this username for guest installation. I will keep it as it's CPU during this installation, especially I will do the um, use the maximum green available that will allow me to do a quick installation instead of waiting later on i may keep it one that will not lead the host to be exhausted with the high cv utilized especially this just for a lab here i will keep it as it's 2 gb disk i will just uh, make a 60 gb it will be vdi so it will not be i will not do pre-allocating full size so it will be just whatever I really use it will be configured here or it will be really used in the disk I'll click next this is the machine yes it's the ISO this is the details and I will click finish once you click finish machine will be auto started and will be powered automatically once it's power, I do advise you to change here. Yes, change up and down as much as possible to avoid the installation because by default, when you keep it, it will go to the installation and this installation will go to a quick, a kick start, sorry. It's kind of a quick installation. It's called kick start. There's a predefined configuration file already so it will be silent without a GUI and selection later on definitely you will be able to change all these settings however it's too buffer to to it's to it's a prefer to select everything right now before installation so if you can see here down press tab for full configuration option for the menu so I will press tab in this installation here you will see this configuration file. Let's start with kick S, if you can see this one. So I will remove this. And the kick start will be removed. Quiet, even quiet, I will remove it. And I will just keep this. And I will press enter. Now it will load the drivers and it will promote me the GUI installation. If you didn't or if you missed this, then it will be silently and quietly installed using the kickstart configuration file. It will be fine. You can change everything later on. Uh, for me, for this lab, it's I do prefer to use the, the GUI installation so I can explain the basic installation uh, uh, that we will do during this installation. Let's wait till this loaded being completed. Can see here starting installer. We'll see this installer now. Installation will start. I will keep it as English as it's nothing to be changed here. Click continue out of window again here. Yes. What I can change here date and time root password. It must to be. I will do root one, two, three. And again, yes, it's weak. However, I will keep it as it's it will alert me. Yes, where I will keep it as it's right now. Installation destination K dump. I will remove it. Enabling KDAM, it's a kernel dumping. It will take a little bit memory. 
In my lab, I will not need it in production yet. Maybe advice to keep it as it's. However, right now, I will remove it from my lab just to save the memory. Network configuration, I will do it in my post installation software selection. This is by default coming with several GUI. This is the yeah, most and will give you all GUI needed. Mostly, yes, we installed using this. If there is a package needed for DNS or the ring later on, we can install this using the NF or YUM. Okay, I will keep it this as it. The needed thing, it will be indirect. You can see the installation destination. Here where the configuration of your storage. By default, it will go to the automatic. In this lab, let me use the custom and show you how I will customize the storage. Click on custom and select the disk. Refresh. We scan the disk. Okay. So if you and you click in done, it will take you to another window. Here you have to create your partitions for installation. By default, it will go to the LVM, LVM thin provisioning and standard partitioning. All these can be discussed in the storage of Linux. LVM, it's logical volume manager. I will use this, easy to manage, very preferred. I will click plus. Here, the minimum installation is a three selection three mount point. The root one, the slash boot, and the swap one. So let me use this. Start with the swap. The swap is the memory, or I can start even with the slash boot. Capacity here, I will do 200, 250 as per the documentation or recommendation. This is the minimum. In the slash boot, it will be bootable. File will be stored there. Minimum is 250 M. Let me put it like this and add this point point. It will appear here. Maybe point, make a point. It's maybe point here. Standard file device is XFS. Yeah, I can use it. Yes, I can use it. However, I will not change it. Right now, I'll keep it as it's. Encrypted and labeling a lot of things. Let me label it with boot. So it will be labeled in the, in the level of labeling, better for the readable mount file uh, in the ET, ETSFS tape. What's else needed? Swap and root. Root, I will do the remaining. So let me use the swap. Because memory is 2GB, here I will do this 2GB as well for installation, it's advisable and recommended to be equal to memory and not less than 2 GB. So even more I can do it if I'm going to increase the memory later. However, I can start with 2 GB at this point. Swap is a swap, it's LVM as well by default. Come, I can change it to be a standard partition. However, yeah, again, LVM is advisable and recommended. Let me change the spot as well to LVM. By the foot, it come like this. We'll see if it's there is any error or things will come. So swap, swap. Let me label it as well. So it will be labeled. And the remaining, you can see we have available 57.75. I will add all these to be in the root. Shall I do slash home slash far? No, it's not needed. Yeah, it's better and advisable that you segregate this to avoid any uh, uh, storage uh, issue with the root, however, because it's in my lab here. It will be advisable to have a simple and minimum installation mount, so add without storage and see. Automatically, it will take all remaining disk. That's it. Yes, that's it. I will click down here. Checking storage. Press check details. There is error. Yeah, 
I know it's for slash boot, but the slash boot file system cannot be type of LVM. For slash boot, it's less than five. Oh, it has been changed to minimum this one. Lower than recommended for a normal Red Hat installation Linux. So two thing here, I have to change it. There's this five one two. Five one two megabyte and second the type check let's click done again check the details I cannot be in there so what what shall we do we have to change it to standard partition so slash boot because it will be boot and contain the boot files it's not possible that I host this however what about the storage can we yeah i have to remove some storage from here so right now this one is taking all storage let me take when it's this one 75 i will take it out from here i will add add it here to have 512 with the past standard. Again, here I will add the point 5. That's not taking point 5. Click down see now it will change destroy format this is the a will be unknown except change and that's it for right now security policies and others to make check this date time you can change this later so let's try click on begin installation now it will install all packages it will configure the storage and everything will be done in this stage here we go it's completed we will press the reboot that's the last step then we will see what's the remaining here and we will continue with it Yes, here we go. Kernel has been installed. All right, here three steps is missing. Licensing agreement. We have to click and accept the hero license. You may go through it if you would like. Subscription manager. If you would like to link the system with the portal of subscriptions a lot of advantage of this however for my lab i don't need this advantage user creation you may create a new user let me click finish without to create a user and see how this will be gone let's see how it will be here we go very good. Yes, there should be a user. Let me call it admin. Password, I will do admin123. Admin123. Next. Start the Linux. Uh, here we go. Everything has been set up. So what we will do is turning off this machine power off how we will do the post installation setup later in another video thank you for watching how to install hill 8 and see you in another video